All right, so we're going to do delve into our example here for calculating the required spares. We'll, of course, do this one into Excel. So there's some inputs we need here. And of course, we're going to go and take our cylinder data we did from our Weibull analysis here uh, with our beta and eta values. And we're going to add a couple of more inputs here, which is our required availability. So let's say we want 99% availability for our asset. So we're going to stock components to achieve that 99% availability. Uh, we're going to do a time horizon. So for us, it's just per year. So what we're going to do is average spares required per year, and that's 8760 hours. We're going to do a number of systems. So our cylinder systems we're going to do as an independent system, one cylinder. The lead time for these corrective maintenance parts is 336 hours, um, and the preventative maintenance interval is 3,500 hours. So we selected this based on our optimal maintenance interval. So let's get started. So the first, I've actually pre-filled some of these here because you know we've calculated lambda t many, many, many times. So we're just gonna continue up here. And remember when we said our PM parts required is gonna be simple, and it still is. We're just going to simply divide the amount of hours we have per year divided by our maintenance strategy here, which is 3,500 hours. And we're going to multiply that by the number of systems we have, which in this case is just going to be one. So for the year, in theory, like rounding, uh, if you want an exact number, we need two and a half spare parts for the year based on just our preventative maintenance interval. So cool. Now, the lead time here is we've put a lead time for our parts between zero and let's say 11,000 hours, um, quite a big gap. Sorry, it's it's really, it's um, it's not lead time, it's uh, it's PM interval, so or PM time. Uh, lambda T, our failure rate, again, function of beta and eta and um, our preventative maintenance time, but we've calculated this a couple of times and Here's the formula for it. It's still the same as it was because we're using the same cylinder data. Nothing's changed there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight here our 3,500 hour interval and our associated failure rate. Because what you're gonna do now is what's the average uh, corrective maintenance parts acquired if we were to fail something between our 3,500 hours? And that's simply put is your failure rate times your number of systems, which we have one. And we're going to times that by our PM interval, which will give us, will give us um, 0 0.39. Uh, corrective maintenance parts required. If we were to, ex that's a chance we would experience a failure in that 3,500 hour interval. Now, how many spares we actually need um, for corrective maintenance is going to be dependent on our Poisson distribution, right? So this one's quite simple. I've put a ranking list of 0 to 20 spares. And then we're going to do our Poisson distribution and find out what sort of associated level of um, availability we're going to, going, to, going to have, right? So we're going to go equals Poisson list x, which is... Um, X is going to be our I value, which is number of spares. Our mean is going to be this value here, which we're going to lock in. And we're just going to put true for cumulative, because we want cumulative. And we're just going to drag that one down. Voila. So if you want, you can see here, if you want like 67% availability, you're going to have zero spares. If you want 94% availability, you're gonna you should stock one spare if you want 99.2 we're gonna stock two right um so the actual way of adding this one in is you're gonna use a match function and that match function is gonna be your required availability and match it with anywhere in in your poisson distribution uh, probability range which when you enter in gives us two right because two gives us 99 percent and now if you want your total spares, all you're simply going to do is add up your PM parts required and your CM spares required. And you're going to round them up because 2.5 really is three, right? You can't have half spares. So we're going to always do a ceiling function here to round them up, which gives you five spares 
to achieve that 99% availability. So like I said, it's not super complicated to tra- to calculate this, but you just need to get the steps right. And these steps are quite similar to calculating optimal maintenance interval, except instead of balancing cost here, we're gonna balance that availability because we've already balanced the cost in calculating the optimal maintenance interval, which is 3,500 hours. And now we wanna balance the required um, probability of stock out, right? We don't want stock out, so we're gonna go and push for this.